exalt you, we magnify you, hallelujah. You're great and greatly to be praised. Come on, saints, begin to worship the King of glory. Worship the I am that I am, the lion from the tribe of Judah, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley. He's a bright and morning star. Father, we give you praise. We salute your majesty. Come on, begin to invite your friends. Begin as you come on the line, invite your friends to join. Father, we bless your name, O God. You're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. You're a great God. You're the great I am. Hallelujah. We worship you, O God. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. All of you joining on YouTube, on Facebook, come on, begin to bless the name of the Lord wherever you are. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. His mercy endured forever. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the highest, let a king be lifted up. Hosanna. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we worship you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hosanna, our King, a King of glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we magnify you, O oh God. Hallelujah. We worship you, King of glory. Hallelujah. Hosanna in the Thank you, Jesus. In the highest, let a king be lifted up. Hosanna. Hosanna. In the highest, let a king be lifted up. Hosanna. Hosanna. In the Let a king be lifted up. Hosanna. Higher. Higher. Be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher. Be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher. Be lifted higher. You be lifted higher. Oh, higher. We lift you higher. You be lifted higher. Higher. Be lifted higher. You be lifted higher. Higher. Be lifted higher. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, we lift you high, oh God. We lift you up, oh God. We worship you, oh God. Let a king be lifted high. Let a king be lifted high. 
Hosanna. Thank you, Jesus. Let our King be lifted high. Let our King be lifted up. Hosanna. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Father, we lift you up, oh God. Father, we lift you up, O oh God. Oh, let our King be lifted high, O oh God. Let our King be lifted up. Let our King be lifted up. Hosanna. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we lift you high, oh God. Father, we lift you, oh God, above all other gods. Father, there is none like you, oh God. There is none beside you. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Father, we glorify you, oh God. We magnify you. Hallelujah to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, Father, we worship you, O oh God. We give you praise. We magnify you, O oh God. King of glory, you are awesome. You're mighty, you're great. Hallelujah. Let our King be lifted up. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Father, we worship you. Father, we bless you, O oh God. We magnify you, O oh God. We glorify you, O oh God. Father, we worship you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we give you praise, O oh God. Come on, somebody, worship him, worship him. He is the God of all creation. He's the king of all glory. Father, we give you praise, O oh God. Hosanna in the highest. Let a king be lifted up. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, let a king be lifted up. Oh, We lift you higher, higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Thank you, Jesus. 
Let a king be lifted up. Let a king be lifted up. Let a king be lifted up. Hosanna. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going higher, yes, higher. I'm going higher today. I'm going higher, yes, higher. Going with Jesus to stay. I'm going above the shadows. Into the presence of God, into the presence of Jesus. Oh, I'm going higher today. Come on, saints, come with me. I'm going higher, yes, higher. I'm going higher today. Come on, saints, come with me. I'm going higher, yes, higher. Going with Jesus to stay. I'm going above the shadows. Into the presence of God, into the presence of Jesus. Oh, I'm going higher today. Come on, saints, come with me. We are going higher, yes, higher. We are going higher today. Come on, saints, come with me. We are going higher, yes, higher. Going with Jesus to stay. We are going above the shadows into the presence of God, into the presence of Jesus. Oh, we are going higher today. We are going above the shadows into the presence of God into the presence of Jesus. Oh, we are going higher today. Come on, saints, come with me. We are going above the shadows into the presence of God, into the presence of Jesus. Oh, we are going higher today. Oh, we are going higher. Yes, I am. We are going higher today. Somebody come with me. We are going higher. Yes, I am. Going with Jesus to stay. We are going above the shadows into the presence of God, into the presence of Jesus. Oh, we are going higher today. We are going above the shadows into the presence of God, into the presence of Jesus. Oh, we are going higher today. 
I am going above the shadows into the presence of God, into the presence of Jesus. Oh, we are going higher today. I am going above the shadows. I am in the presence of God. I am in the presence of Jesus. Oh, I am going higher today. Oh, Father, Lord, just draw your people into your presence this evening, oh God. Father, draw your people, oh God, give them an encounter with you this evening, oh God. Wherever they are, Father, there's no distance in the spirit. Oh, Father, just begin to touch everyone listening to the sound of my voice, oh God. Begin to draw them closer, begin to draw them, begin to release that sweet delight, some presence, oh God. Your anointing, oh God, that breaks the yoke. Begin to release that anointing upon your people right now, oh God, even as they listen, even as they watch, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, I have gone above the shadows. I am in the presence of God. But I feel your presence. I am in the presence of Jesus. Oh, I have gone higher today, but I have gone above the shadows. I am in the presence of God, but I feel your presence. I am in the presence of Jesus. Oh, I have gone higher today, but I give your children access. Give your children access so they can come into your presence. We are going above the shadows into the presence of God. But I feel your presence. Into the presence of Jesus. Oh, I have gone higher today. Come with me. Come on, saints, come with me. Come on, saints, come with me. Father, give them access. Oh, Lord, give them access. Access into your presence. Father, give them access. Oh, I have gone above the shadows. I am in the presence of God. I am in the presence of Jesus. Oh, I have gone higher today. Father, give access. We have gone above the shadows. We are in the presence of God. We are in the presence of Jesus. Oh, we have gone higher today. We have gone above the shadows. We are in the presence of God. We are in the presence of Jesus. Oh, we have gone higher today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your presence, oh God. Oh, Father, I thank you for your sweet delight, sunness. Oh, I thank you for your power, oh God, your anointing that destroys the yoke. 
Lord Jesus, that as your children listen, oh God. Father, give them access into your presence, oh God. Let them begin to feel that sweet delight someness, oh God. Let them begin to feel that power, that anointing, begin to visit them in their homes, oh God. That fire, oh God, that will burn in their homes. The fire that will burn wherever they are right now, oh God. There's no distance in the spirit. There's no distance in the spirit, oh God. Oh, we have gone above the shadows. We are in the presence of God. We are in the presence of Jesus. Oh, we have gone higher today. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you today, oh God. Father, we thank you today for your people that are joining from all over the world. Begin to share it on your page. Invite your friends to join. Today, we're going to be talking about why we need personal revival. Hallelujah. For the past few weeks, God is just really impressing upon my heart that the church needs to wake up. We need to be revived personally. We need to have that fire inside of us personally. Last week, we talked about the dangers of being a powerless Christian. And we're still going to be continuing in that same kind of theme, saying we need personal revival. Hallelujah. We need to be revived. We need God to come in and do something. Hallelujah. And I'm going to go into the scripture and begin to read what King David said. Lord Jesus, today, oh God, touch your people, Father. In whatever way, oh God, that they need you today, Lord Jesus, let your anointing touch them. Let your fire touch them, oh God. Let your power that is above every other power touch them today, oh God. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, touch us, oh God. The Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 25, Psalm 119, verse 25, it said, my soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to your word. Hallelujah. Psalmist was praying here that my soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to your word. In other words, he needed a quickening so that their soul will not cleave unto the dust. And what does the dust mean? The Lord Jesus needs to quicken our souls. Hallelujah. When God created Adam and Eve in the beginning, they were created from the dust. That is why God told Adam that from dust you came and from dust you will return. So he said, my soul cleaved unto the dust. That means my soul is cleaving to the things of the flesh. The dust is our flesh. That's why the Bible says that, that the snake will eat dirt, it will eat dust. God is saying here that you can cry out to him. The psalmist knew it. He knew he needed personal revival. He said, my soul cleaved unto the dust. My soul is cleaving to the things that are mundane. My soul is cleaving to the things of the flesh. My soul is cleaving to the things of my evil conscupiscence, my worldly desires. Quicken me, O oh God, according to your word. Because when your soul starts cleaving unto the dust, you don't follow the word of God. You don't follow his anointing. You don't follow what God wants you to do. You follow your own way. You follow what is pleasing to your flesh. And flesh is what? Flesh is dust. So we're not the first generation that will be walking in the flesh. We're not the first generation that's going to cry to God, oh, Lord, there is something wrong here. I want to do right, but my soul cleaved unto the dust. Hallelujah. Cry out to the Lord for God to quicken you. we got to cry out to the God. The Bible says in Psalm 80, Verse 18, it says, so we will not go back from thee. Quicken us and we will call upon your name. Turn us again, O God of hosts. Cause your face to shine and we will be saved. It's like you have to ask God, say, Father, so that I will not go away from you. So I will not wander astray. So that I will not follow the ways of the world. I will not follow the ways of my, of my friends and everybody around me. Father, quicken me so I will call upon your name. We need to be quickened. We need personal revival. 
We need that touch that only God can do it. We need that thing that only God can draw us in. Because if he doesn't draw us, we cannot come by our own strength. And if you're not quickened, if you're not on fire, you're not going to want to pray. You're not going to want to call upon the Lord. So that is why you have to recognize if you're going through your days, you don't want to pray. You don't want to fast. You don't want to fight. Even when you try, your soul is just weak. Especially in this time, in this generation, when there is such an evil, evil presence all over the nations. There is such a heavy, there's such a heavy demonic covering over the nation. We got to get to a stage where we recognize that our spiritual condition is pitiful. Look at the apostles of old. The saints of old moved in power. The saints of old moved in fire. The saints of old, even the ushers, the people in the church, when they went and wherever they went, people were saved, people got delivered, people got healed. Hallelujah. There are two the Lord Jesus did three things. He healed the sick. He cast out devils. He preached the gospel. The apostles did three things. They healed the sick. They cast out devils. They preached the gospel. The saints of old did three things. They healed the sick. They cast out devils. And they preached the gospel. But we are in a certain situation right now in our life where the saints of today will just sit in church. Feed me, feed me, feed me. If the power of God moves just a little bit, I want my breakthrough, I want my next level, I want to catch it. At the end of the day, we are not really interested in God like that. If you're going through your life and God and your life is not touching people, healing the sick, casting out devils, preaching the gospel and bringing people to Christ. You're, 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 you're uh, how do I even call it? You are... Um, a dead Christian. You're a backslidden Christian. If you were ever front slidden, if that makes any sense. You're a Christian that is powerless. You are, you are an unaccomplished Christian. You're a Christian that cannot do anything with the salvation that the Lord Jesus gave you. My spiritual mom, Reverend, Mosi Maduba, uh, uh, Reverend Mrs. Mosi Maduba, she did a message and I'm going to read what she, you know, something, she wrote a book and this was something she wrote. She said, revival is a supernatural intervention of God on a sickly, backslidden, spiritually impotent, stagnating, receding church, paralyzed by compromise and human efforts. Revival is to restore and reactivate her to her lost, powerful, and militant state. It brings upon the church fresh, genuine, fearful conviction of sin. It brings upon the church a resolve to serve God with passion, with a willingness and a readiness to obey God absolutely and unconditionally. That's what revival does. It brings us to a state of total surrender to the Holy Spirit to take back his controlling place in our lives. And it's in running the affairs of the church as it was from the time of the early apostles. These days we, we run the church with boards and all that kind of stuff and there's no power in the church. People go to church with problems and they come out of there with problems because there's no power in the church. People meet us as Christians and they leave us with the same problems that they came with because there's no power in the church. Every single one of us need personal revival. If you are revived personally, you can revive someone else. But if you cannot save the world, you can save a nation. If you cannot save a nation, you can save a city. If you cannot save a city, you can save a neighborhood. If you cannot save a neighborhood, you can save a household. If you cannot save your household, you can save yourself. So we need personal revival. If everybody takes their personal revival seriously as a Christian, the church will be revived. Revival is a restoration to life or consciousness or activeness to someone who has been unconscious in a state of coma or stupor. Revival is to give new strength and energy to someone whose strength is failing him. Revival is an improvement of the condition or the fortunes of someone. It is an instance of making something active that 
popular or, or significant again. Revival is the glorious return of the lost God's glory and his awesome presence in the life of an individual, a church, a nation. So if God's glorious presence should return to you as an individual, if we take personal revival seriously, then the revival of the nation is imminent. But if we keep praying for revival, the revival of the nation, and we never take our personal revival seriously, the nation will not be revived. Because the nation is made up of the people that are part of that nation. Revival is to recover a weary and nearly dead man from the spiritual wilderness and slumber and put him back on his feet as a strong, militant, unstoppable member of the God's recovery army. When it happens, one recovers his excitement, his enthusiasm and interest in God in God's word, in prayer, in fasting, it becomes very, and you become very devoted to knowing and walking with God personally. You, it brings back to life what is dead and dying. When you're personally revived, the things of the Lord become foremost in your heart. When you're personally revived, you want God, not because he can heal you, not because he can deliver you, not because he can give you a breakthrough, not because of the next miracle that you want. You know, you want God because he is God. There is a passion in your soul for him. There is a passion in your life for him. There is a, there is a, your soul is panting for him. Like the psalmist said that, that as the deer panted, as the heart panted after the water brooks, my soul panted after thee, O oh Lord. Your soul starts panting after God. King David said that, I follow hard after God. When you're personally revived, you follow hard after God. You become a God chaser. And only God chasers will survive in this dispensation. The evil is getting more evil. The evil is getting darker and darker and darker. The world is going astray. Your light has to start shining so much brighter. Your light has to shine so much that they could see you as that light upon the hill. Because let me ask you something. If the sword loses its favor, if the sword loses its saltiness, who is going to be the salt of the earth? Revival is for God's people, for Christians. It happens to believers first. It brings them to a state of restoration. They, are, they renew their love and their commitment to God, to the master, to walking in a new death with God. Revival is for those who have been born again by the spirit of God, but have grown cold in their faith. And they need to be stirred up again. They need to be set afresh. They need to be set afresh. They need a fresh fire to fall upon them. We need revival. You need to be personally revived. You need to cry out to God like the psalmist Christ say, Father, so I will not get away from you. Quicken me, O oh God, so that I will call upon you. Because we can't revive ourselves. The church right now is at a level where we don't know what to do anymore. There are a lot of us that get up, we plan prayer programs, we plan things that we're going to do. At the end of the day, the enemy is overtaking us, is pressing us down, and we're falling, we're trying, we're crying, but there is no strength. We need God. Revival is God rending open the heavens and coming to touch you. Revival is, is, is something that starts from God. All you can do is tell him that you need it. Revival is not something you can do in your own strength and power. Revival is getting to a stage in your life when you realize that I need God. Getting to a place like, like, like Isaiah that after he had been prophesying and prophesying, oh, woe to this, woe to that. At some point, he met God and he said, woe, it's me for I am a man of unclean lips and I live among people of unclean lips. When revival comes, you stop and you're convicted of sin. You're convicted of your fleshy ways. You're convicted of your worldly ways. And you say, woe is me. For I have seen God. And I've realized how filthy I am. And God, I need a cleansing. When you become personally revived, you start recognizing the frailty of your humanity. And something from the depth of your soul start crying out to God. And I'm telling you, saints, God does not negate a desperate cry. 
Whenever somebody cries out desperately to God, God will answer you. I know that people are struggling with, oh, there are people calling me from all over the world. This spirit husband is harassing me. Witchcraft is doing this. Oh, somebody did that. Saints, I mean, you can keep fighting those parallel battles, pushing the devil on your level, or you can gather fire and get to a stage where you are untouchable. Ah, somebody hear me. You can continue to fight those battles. Today you punch the devil, tomorrow he punches you back. Today you punch the devil, tomorrow he punches you back. Or you can get to that stage, you can connect to the master, the son of righteousness, connect to the God that has all power and get to the stage where you are propelled to a place where you are untouchable. Jesus. Oh, he hurts my soul when I see Christians running away from witches. It hurts my soul when I hear people calling all the time. Oh, I can't sleep. The devil is pulling me. This is you know why? It's because there's something wrong with your Christianity. You need fire, you need revival, you need God to come in and do something inside of you and shake something and uproot all the junk, uproot everything inside of you that he did not plan and fill you with fire. Because let me tell you something: Bazabo is the king of lies, and flies do not land on a hot object. Flies don't land on a hot object. When you're hot, flies will not land on you. The only reason why those flies are able to land on you and touch you and pull your head and start secreting maggots inside your ear and your body is lack of fire, lack of revival. We need God. We need God. There has to be a desperation in our soul for him. It is that desperation that will bring heaven down to touch you as an individual. Like I said, you cannot revive the world. You can revive a continent. If you cannot revive a continent, you can revive a nation. If you cannot revive a nation, you can revive a city. If you cannot revive a city, you can revive a neighborhood. If you cannot revive a neighborhood, you can revive your household. Even when your household fails, seek your own revival. The Bible says we should walk our salvation with fear and trembling. Least after we have preached this gospel, we become a castaway. You need revival. It is that fire that will make you survive. It is that fire that will make you stand in the evil day. It is that fire that will make you hold you up when everybody else is falling. It is that fire that will protect you from the, from the wiles of the enemy. It is that fire that will give you discernment to discern evil from good. You need revival. You need that fire that will burn, that passion for God to burn inside of you that on a daily basis you want to connect to the master because he's the king of all creation. He's the king of glory and he's your king. Oh, Father, how we need revival. How we need you to rain upon the heavens, oh God. Like prophet Isaiah prayed in Isaiah 64, that, oh, that thou wouldest rain the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the nations might tremble at your presence, that God would rain the heavens and come down and touch you. You got to pray that prayer for yourself. Say, oh God, arise, rent open the heavens, come down in your power, in your fire, in your anointing and touch me for I need a touch. I need a touch, oh God, I cannot continue like this. Rent open the heavens, oh God. Come down and touch us, oh God. Come down and touch us, oh God. You got to get to a place where you're desperate. When you see the enemy harassing you, you need to stop and say, there's something wrong with my Christianity. There's something wrong with the way I'm doing it. I need revival. I need God to touch me. I need heaven to touch me. I need heaven to kiss the earth because I cannot do it by myself anymore. I've been praying and fasting and giving and sowing and going to church and doing all I know how to do. I don't know any else way to do. Lord, I need you. When you start crying to God like that, nobody comes to the Father like that and get and leaves empty-handed. Nobody cries out. The Bible says that if we cry unto him, he will show us great and mighty things that we know it not. Nobody comes to God with a desperate cry and leaves empty-handed. Hallelujah. The word of God says, Thank you, Jesus. 
The word of God says in Psalm 119, verse 33, it said, teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. You got to get to a place where you say, Father, teach me the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go to the path of your commandments, for therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto your testimonies and not unto covetousness. Turn my eyes away from beholding vanity, O Lord. Quicken thou me in your ways. Establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to fear. Turn away my reproach for which I fear, for your judgment are good. Behold, I have longed after your precepts. Quicken me in your righteousness. You have to have a recognition that you need God to do this for you. You have to have a recognition that your soul is dry. You're like the dry bones that have no life. If you want to argue, when is the last time you healed the sick? When is the last time you cast a demon out of somebody? When is the last time you prayed for somebody and they gave your life to Christ? When is the last time you were victorious over the wiles of the enemy? When is the last time you passionately spend so much time with God that this world has no more meaning for you. A lot of us are still busy competing with the Joneses. When is the last time your passion burned for God? What happened to your first love? Say, teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. There has to be a cry from the inside of you. Say, Lord, I can't do this in my own strength. Teach me, O oh Lord, the way of your statutes. I am tired of the devil harassing me. I am tired of being in this situation. I am tired of praying for my breakthrough. I am tired of wandering to and fro. I am tired of being deceived by all these demonic pastors. I am tired of falling for the false prophets. I am tired of all that. I need God to quicken me. We need personal revival. It's only personal revival that will keep you alive in this evil day. He said, teach me. Psalm 119 verse 33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes and I shall keep it to the end. The psalmist was crying out because he knew that this was not something he could do in his own power, in his own strength. When you sense, when you get up and you start realizing that this Christianity that I'm practicing is not working. People come to me and they are sick and I pray and nothing happens. People come to me that are possessed with demonic spirits and I'm too terrified to talk to them. People come to me that I have brothers and sisters and cousins that are not saved and I preach to them and it does not enter their ears. It's like it passes over their head. There is something wrong with my fire. There's something wrong with my salvation because Lord, I am here. I claim to be a child of God, but I am powerless. I don't have fire. I am not revived. I plan those prayer programs. I plan to pray. I plan to fast. But something inside of me pushes me to go and eat. I plan to read your word. But as, when I read your word, it's like I fall asleep. There is slumber over my soul. Saints, do you recognize your spiritual condition? It is when you recognize your spiritual condition, then you start crying out to God like the psalmist cried here in Psalm 119 verse 33. Say, teach me, O Lord, your way, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. Give me understanding. And I shall keep your law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of your commandments. It is God that can make you. When you start saying that, Lord, I, I'm trying. I'm trying my best, my dandest. But I, I don't know. I, I can't do it. I'm trying to obey you. But there's so much pulling me this way and pulling me that way. So many desires coming out of me. I don't even know why I act this way that I act. But Lord, I need help. I am spiritually sick. The fruit that I'm bearing are not fruits of righteousness. The fruit that I'm bearing are not fruit of salvation. I am going through my life on a daily basis and I am not thinking about eternity. My life is not focused on eternity. My life is not focused on the master. It's focused on my job, my money, my children, my wife, my husband, my this. Do you understand? I'm not saying those things are not necessarily bad things. It's just that if you make those things God, then there's no place for God in your life. Say, make me to go in the path of your commandments. You need to ask God, Father, help me to go into the path of your commandments. For I delight in them. 
Incline my heart to your testimonies, not to covetousness. I don't want to be coveting the latest car, coveting the latest job, coveting the biggest dad, coveting this, this, this. We are busy coveting stuff. All our hearts, we want this, we want that. We buy more toys and toys and then we get caught up in debt and then we're paying for more toys. Get to the stage, you say, Father, take my heart away from covetousness. He said, turn away my eyes from beholding vanity. A lot of the things that we do is vanity, vanity, vanity. We pluck our eyebrows. We push out our chest. We paint our hands blue and green and yellow. And we call ourselves children of God. And you go around and look at your hand. You look like a witch. You look like the witch of Endor with green nail polish and purple hair. When somebody looks at you, they go, Ugh. if, the, if God, you pray that angels should visit you, the angels come, they take one look at you. You painted your lip with lipstick that was made from the marine kingdom, from the blood of the innocent. They look at you. They look at you like a blood drinker. And they run. Are you wondering why you're praying and praying and praying? God is not answering. Ah, Jesus. Revival makes people brings people out of the world. Revival draws us out of all this worldliness into God. Personal revival brings you out of a life of mediocrity into a life of passion. It brings you out of a life of slumber into a life of passion. It takes you from a place where reading the Bible is a chore. It takes you from a place where going to church becomes... Ugh. It takes you to that place where your heart is excited and you sound like the psalmist that, oh, how much I rejoice when they said we should go to the house of the Lord. But since revival is something that God needs to do for you, it's not something you can do in your own strength. It's not something you can pray yourself into. All you can pray is pray to God to revive you. Because when you start praying, say, Father, give me passion for you. Give me passion for your word. Release the spirit of prayer over me, the spirit of grace and supplication, the spirit of prayer and intercession. Father, pour it out. Because you know prayer is a spirit. You see, when people come to our prayer house here in Houston, when people come to, our, to, to the ministry, the anointing is there for prayer. Ah, people can pray, people can fast. People will do three-day dry fast, nothing. And I always tell them, I said, this place is, you know, the heavens is open over here for prayer and fasting. The presence of God is here because we've been digging and digging this well. But when you leave from there and go home, how, what are you going to do? When you leave from this place, because this place looks like it's, you know, it's, it's even from the church here with all this anointing and you get to back to your house, you need that personal revival. That's what's going to make you stand. Well, since I've told people many times, the devil has no power over an on fire Christian. The devil has no power over a child of God that is connected to the master. Oh, this the devil did, this the devil did that, the devil did that. You're a child of light. Why is light being harassed by darkness? Why should light run away from darkness? Why are you sitting here warning and complaining about the witches that are staying on the top of your, your building upstairs when your prayer should drive them away or get them saved? Why? Because you don't, you're not personally revived. We need revival. We need God to rend open the heavens and come back and touch our souls. That's why you need to start crying out to God. Say, Father, quicken me that I will call upon you. So we will not turn away from you, oh God. Quicken us to call upon you. Because the Bible says, if God does not draw you, you can't come. You can try in your own strength, but you can't do it. If God does not draw you into righteousness, you will continue to live in sin. But when you become revived, when your soul is revived, your spirit man is alive. Your spirit man takes control over your flesh and your soul. And you don't fall into sin. Hallelujah. There's a book here that I'm reading. It's called Why Revival Tarries by Leonard Ravenhill. Why Revival Tarries. You know, I read some of these books because it helps to keep me strong. It helps to keep me in the presence of God. It takes me to a place where I want to keep praying. There's something he said here that really, really challenged me. Hallelujah. He said here that no man is greater than his prayer life. The pastor who is not praying is playing. 
The people who are not praying are straying. The pulpit that is the pulpit can be a shop window to display one's talents. The prayer closet allows no showing off. Poverty stricken as the church is today in many things, she is more stricken in the place of prayer. Every failure in life, saints, is a failure of prayer. Every failure in life, saints, is a failure that can be traced back to your spiritual foundation. The Bible says that we have many organizers and very few, not the Bible, uh, uh, but our Raven Hill says that we have many organizers and very few ag agonizers. We are busy organizing program programs. We spend so much money doing program for that program for this program for that. When we need to do is get into the place of prayer and pray so that the hearts and the souls of people can change. We have many players and very few prayers. We have people that are singers and very few clingers that are clinging to the Holy Spirit. We have many people that are totally talented, they can sing like a lark. But if your singing doesn't bring deliverance and healing, and if your singing doesn't bring down the presence of God, you're a clinging symbol. You're just like... Pak, 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 pak. You can sing, and the power that comes from your voice, you become a voice of deliverance. Most of the time, we just praise God, and we worship God, and we worship God, and His power comes. And as His power comes... People get touched. People get healed. And that same power goes even through television. People watch our shows on YouTube and they get the same anointing. Why? Because we worship and we worship and we worship till the power of God came. And when the power of God came, my voice spoke. It became a voice of power. So that when my voice speaks 10 years, I have messages that I've done 10 years ago. People listen to it today. They still receive the same power that God released the day that the message was preached. We are, you got to cling to God. Because when his anointing and fire comes upon you, it oozes out of you. I tell people, you cannot give what you don't have. You can preach. You can pray. Like with sadness, you can do all that and still get it wrong. You can't give what you don't have. A lot of us, like, like the Chinese Christians say that the American church, he can, he can never imagine how much the American church can do without the Holy Spirit. Then imagine if we could just allow the Holy Spirit into the church. It says that there are two prerequisites to a successful Christian living. Vision and passion. You got to have a vision of who you are as a child of God. And you have to have passion for God. Because it is your passion for God that will bring down the presence of God. It's your passion for God that will call him to you. Because as you chase after God, God meets you halfway, more than halfway. He goes a long way. You take one or two steps, he takes a thousand steps. Hallelujah. And that vision and passion is only maintained in prayer. You got to pray until something happens. You got to pray until God revives you. You got to go back into the word of God. I'm telling you, saints, read Psalm 119. Start getting up and just reciting Psalm 119. He talks about God's precepts and his word. And the psalmist spent time just crying that God should teach him his ways, his precepts, and quicken him so that he will not turn away from him. Hallelujah. Saints, the issues in the church are many. The issues in the life of the saints are many. But we got to get to a place where our fire is able to overcome these issues. There are a lot of us that want to be with God. We want to be, we want much from God. We want to do much for God. But for you to get much from God and do much for God, you have to be much with God. Did you hear that? For you to do much for God and receive much from God, you have to be much with God. All of these things that we're chasing after and running after, like we preached last week about seek first the kingdom, all these things that we're chasing after, they are all in the presence of God. Connect to the presence of God. Everything else follows. You need personal revival. 
We need God to revive us. So wherever you are, begin to talk to God that you need revival. Send down revival, Lord. Let it burn within my soul. Holy Ghost revival. Pentecostal fire. Jesus, send down revival, Lord. Let it burn within my soul. Holy Ghost revival. Pentecostal fire. Father, send down revival, Lord. Let it start within my soul. Holy Ghost revival. Pentecostal fire. Father, send down revival, Lord. Hey, let it burn within my soul. Holy Ghost revival. Pentecostal fire. Jesus, send down revival, Lord. Hey, let it burn within our souls. Holy Ghost revival. Pentecostal fire. Father, send down revival, Lord. Hey, let it burn within my soul. Holy Ghost revival, Pentecostal fire. Jesus, send the light, send the light. Oh, Lord Jehovah, send the light into our soul. Father, send the light. Oh, send the light. Oh, Lord Jehovah, send the light into our soul. Oh God, we need your light. Send the light. Oh, send the light. Oh Lord Jehovah, send the light into us. So, oh God, we need your light. Send the light. Jesus, send the light. Hey, oh Lord Jehovah, shine your light into my soul. Father, we need a light. Shine your light. Oh God, shine your light. Jesus, oh Lord Jehovah, shine your light. Into our soul, it is raining all over me. Oh, I can feel it. Is the latter rain? Oh, ride on Jesus. Give us more until we are wet, until we are soaked with the latter rain. It is raining, it is raining all over me. Hey, Jesus, I can feel it. He's a lottery. Ride on, Lord. Ride on, Jesus. Give us more rain. Until we are wet. Until we are soaked with the lottery. It is raining. It is raining. All over me, 
how it is raining, I can feel it. Is the lot of rain. Receive the rain right on Jesus. Give us more rain until we are wet. Until we are soaked with the latter rain, oh, ride on Jesus. We need more rain. Until we are wet, until we are soaked with the latter rain, oh, ride on Jesus. soaked with the latter rain. Oh, Father, just pour out your rain, pour out your anointing, oh God. Father, pour out revival upon your people. Wake us up, oh God, out of spiritual slumber. Just begin to pray, say, Father, wake me up. Wake me up from every spiritual slumber, oh God. Wake up my spirit man, oh God, wake up my spirit man. Revive me, oh God. Wake up my spirit, man, oh God. Quicken me, oh God, to call upon you. Ask the Lord to quicken you. Say, Father, quicken me to call upon you, oh God. Quicken me, oh God, to call upon you, Lord Jesus. My soul is weak. My flesh is weak, oh God. My spirit, man, oh God, is dead, is cold. Father, quicken me, oh God. Wake me up, oh God, from spiritual slumber, from that spiritual death, and revive me again, oh God. Revive me, oh God. Revive my life. Revive my life, oh God. Revive my life. Set me on fire, oh God. Father, set your people on fire, oh God. Father, set them on fire, oh God, as they are listening right now to the sound of my voice. Father, set them on fire, oh God. Let your fire begin to burn. Let your fire begin to burn upon them, oh God. Let your anointing descend even in their homes, oh God. Let your revival fire begin to touch them. Let it begin to flow without measure. Let it begin to flow without measure. Father, Lord, there is no distance in the spirit. Holy Spirit, release that fire upon your people, oh God. Father, as I feel your fire right now, oh God, let the Holy Ghost fire move, oh God, from person to person. Let the Holy Ghost fire go into homes right now. Let it begin to revive them. Let it begin to revive the children in the homes. Let it begin to revive marriages in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, revive our homes, revive our children, revive our marriages, husbands and wives, oh God. Let your revival fire flow, God. Let your revival fire burn, oh God. Let your revival fire begin to burn in our hearts, oh God. Father, we need a fresh touch from the master. Come on, begin to tell him that you need a touch. Begin to tell him that you need a touch. Touch me one more time. Oh, Lord. Father, touch me. Touch me one more time. Oh, Lord. Father, I need a touch. I need a touch from the master. I need a touch from the Lord. Touch me one more time. Oh, Lord. Jesus, touch us. Touch me one more time. Oh, Lord. Father, touch us. Touch us one more time. Oh, Lord, Father, we need a touch. We need a touch from the master. We need a touch from the Lord. Touch us one more time. Oh, Lord, 
Jesus, we need a touch. We need a touch from the master. We need a touch from the Lord. Touch us one more time. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your fire being released, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for touching your people, waking them up right now, Father. That they will pray without ceasing. That they will read your word without tire, without hunger. Father, Lord, that you begin to bring them out of this world, oh God, into your presence. You bring them out of this world, oh God, into your ways, oh God. Lord Jesus, do it, oh God, because only you can change us. Lord, the king's heart is in the hands of the Lord like rivers of living water, oh God. Like rivers of water, only you can turn our hearts back to you. Lord, as Elijah prayed on Mount Camel, oh God, that Father, today that you come down with your fire, oh God, and turn the hearts of the people back to you, oh God. Turn our hearts back to you, oh God. Draw us back to your presence. Draw us back to the days of old. Father, we've strayed away so far from the religion of old, oh God. Father, give us that old time religion, oh God. That was good for Paul and Silas. Draw us back, oh God. Draw us back to the place of prayer, to the place of obedience. Begin to reveal to every single one of us listening to the sound of my voice. Those things in our lives, oh God, that are keeping you away. Those things in our lives, oh God, that are hindering us. Those gods that will form in our lives that are stopping God from becoming God in our lives. Oh, Father Lord, do it and take the glory. Do it, oh God. Touch us, Father. Revive us again, oh God. That we might seek you. That we might rejoice in your presence. Revive us again, oh God. That our hearts will begin to burn for in passion. Revive us again, oh God, that the passion in our hearts will burn so deep. That the passion in our heart for you, oh God, will burn, oh God. But I do it, oh God, and take the glory in the name of Jesus. Father, we need personal revival. And I'm going to be posting the prayers on personal revival on this message. And I want every single one of you to take those prayers and be praying it every single day. Pray those prayers on personal revival. Pray it until the fire of God start burning in your soul. Pray it on and fasting. Pray it and read the word of God. Open the Bible, begin to read. I told us to start from Genesis and begin to read through. Begin to read at least 10 chapters of the Bible every week. If you can, read more. Read the word of God. Let it become grounded in the word. And pray. And God will begin to move through you. You become a voice that God backs up. You become a voice of deliverance. You become a voice that God uses to shake the world. Oh, may you arise and take your place in the kingdom. May we arise from spiritual slumber and take our place in the world, into the kingdom. May God begin to use us to do his will in this world in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, I give you praise. I soak everyone that has been on this broadcast to the blood of Jesus and everyone that's going to listen to this broadcast, oh God. I pray, Father, that as they listen, oh God, that your fire is going to begin to burn in their souls. I pray, Father, that as they listen, oh God, that your anointing that breaks yokes is going to break every yoke in their lives. I pray, Father, that you're going to draw them into a deeper place of prayer in the name of Jesus. Oh, I pray that the gifts, oh God, that you've bestowed upon your children, You said that the gifts are for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the kingdom. That we're going to begin to work for the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we give you praise. We bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah to King Jesus. Hallelujah to King Jesus. Lord, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm just going to take a time, if anybody has any testimony, people that have been following this uh, broadcast, Hallelujah. This mentorship program, anybody that has any testimony, you can you can share it on Facebook, you can share it on, on YouTube. Hallelujah. You can share it on Facebook and on YouTube right now. 
Hallelujah. Anybody that God has been doing something in your life or you can go on this program and just share your testimony. Amen. And as you begin to read the word and you begin to pray and you begin to fast and you pray that prayer on revival and God start touching you, share your testimony. Share your testimony with us so that other people can see it and be encouraged. Other people can see it and, and realize that it pays to serve God. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Our email address is info at firepowerministry.org. Info at firepowerministry, T-R-O-I, dot org. But you can visit our website, drstella.org, uh, firepowerministry.org. You can go on our website, send us an email. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give God praise. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. So if nobody has any testimony, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I remember we have some programs coming up on, on um, oh, hallelujah. Praise be to God that you're able to do a dry fast. Hallelujah. We give God praise. We have uh, some programs coming up. Our next seven hours with God is coming on um, April 5, 6, and 7. Our next seven hours with God is coming on that day. And our next deliverance program is April 11 to the 14th. For those that want to come for our deliverance program, go to drstella.org and click there to register. The deliverance program is every other month. Like if we do it this April, the next one is going to be in June. After June, the next one is going to be in August. So make an arrangement to come for deliverance because uh, we need it. Or oh, you make an arrangement. Our first Friday prayer comes. It happens every Friday, first Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of the month. We have the seven hours with God that we spend like a serious time with God. Hallelujah. So make arrangement to come. And for those that want to come for deliverance, you have to go on drstella.org. On the left side, you're going to see need deliverance. Click on that button. We only know that you've registered when you've paid for your housing because everybody that comes for deliverance need to stay in the prayer house with us. We have about 22 beds. So if you don't register and it is imperative that you register by the last day of the previous month. So for now, we have about six more days for those that want to register for deliverance on the 31st, those that have not registered by the 31st, because we need to be prepared for people during the deliverance program. That's why we need you people to register by the last day of the month that you're coming. Hallelujah. But if you cannot come for April, our next deliverance is June, then August. Then after August, October, December, just like that, every other month. Hallelujah. And God is going to continue to do mighty and wonderful things in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We give God praise. Amen. Uh, Sister Candice, God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God praise. And we're going to be back again next Sunday. Sunday is that we have uh, our seven hours with God program. Most times I'm not going to do a broadcast on that Sunday because we're usually praying till about 6, 7 p.m. in the night. And, uh, and uh, most times by the time I finish there and finish counseling, it's kind of harder to get to get to the um, to this line by 9 p.m. Amen. So God bless every single one of you that have joined the line today. And um, share this message. Share to your friends. Share our messages. Subscribe on our YouTube channel and share to your friends so that other people can partake of what it is that God is doing in this season, in this ministry. Amen. And wherever you are and listening, find time to come. Like we have a lady today, this week she came all the way from, from um, New Zealand. You know, she's been part of our ministry, Sister Ali. She's right here from New Zealand. We've had somebody come as far as Sri Lanka. We've had people come from just about name it, Canada, from London, from wherever. People have come from all over the world to, to the ministry. So you guys, you know, wherever you are, Make, make arrangements to come maybe during a seven hours with God program and receive the fire, amen, and be part of the fire. Not just receiving the fire, but be part of bringing down the fire, too. amen. So God bless every single one of you. You're all covered in the blood of Jesus. And anything that, anything that God wants from you, may his glory, may his anointing, Begin to take the hindrances away so that you will start chasing him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I soak every single one of you in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus.